Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. This morning we're looking at a 2006 Jeep Wrangler legendary 4 liter inline 6. Kind of a long story. Customer said that at first it started misfiring, bucking. He, uh, he changed out the entire ignition coil and then it wouldn't start at all. So we have a new distributor now that also includes the cam sensor and also a new crank sensor. So you clean the grounds up, it fired up perfectly, ran, warmed up, we shut it off. Next time, long crank time, like 10 seconds, and then it fired up. What codes did it set? Let's uh, jump inside, take a look. Okay, we're using the trusty snap on here. This is a pre can vehicle, so that's my preference. We have a whole bunch of O2 sensor heater circuit low codes and a CKP sensor circuit and a P0300 and a P0315 no crank sensor learned. 335, that will definitely cause a long crank time. Let's demonstrate that. We got a check engine light flashing. One thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. 1,005. So like six seconds. I remember we saw this on the Jeep Wrangler down in South Carolina when uh, on our way back from Florida. That had the no com and after the repair, you know, the computer's back online, we had a long crank time. Crank sensor was unplugged. Um, so right away we're going right for cam and crank at the PCM and see what we have. So on our wiring diagram this is the PCM and connector C2, CKP and CMP right next to each other pins 34 and 35. So let's put channel 1 on the crank, channel 2 on the cam, look at the scope. Alright so the scope is hooked up on connector C2 on those two wires and what do we see? We definitely have a cam, we definitely do not have a crank signal. So, computer is not lying. Beautiful cam signal, and our crank is start, stuck at 5 volts. Okay, so I asked the owner, did he have the original part? He said he did. Here is the original crank sensor. It is a, a Chrysler part number, so just in case, we might need that because this is a Napa, not a sponsor, made in China, aftermarket replacement. Don't trust these. So what's the next step? Go right for the crank sensor. It lives down there. You can actually see the connector right down there. So let's jump under the Jeep. Unplug that with the key on. We want five volts, ground, and the signal. We can actually do a bypass test and see if on the scope we can pull down this five volt wire. So next step with the key on, I want to unplug this crankshaft position sensor and measure the voltages on these three wires. So we have a five volt reference, pink and yellow wire, and then sensor ground is the middle pin on pin two, dark blue and dark green, and then brown and light blue is the signal. So key is on, sensor is unplugged, and on our scope we see that both cam and crank are at 5 volts waiting to be pulled down to ground. This is a pull down design. So now we can grab our voltmeter and I have the ground lead on the battery. That's important for, uh, for proper testing. Let's just do a voltage measurement on all those three wires. Two of them should be at 5 volts. One 5 volt reference and the other one the signal wire waiting to be pulled down to ground. Then we can check the ground with a test light. We want to put some load on it to make sure that wires can carry some current. So here's our meter. Here's the pigtail. Let's check the 5 volt reference. And sure enough, 5.00. Wow, that is perfect. Middle pin should be ground. 12.3 millivolts, that's fine. And then 
there's the signal wire, 5 volts, waiting to be pulled down to ground. So it looks like we're going after a bad sensor here, but let's just double check this ground. So it's a 12.3 millivolt, and to load it, just take a test light, a little trusty. We hook that to battery positive, and I'll just use this jumper. Comes down to here, so I'll put the test light in here. If it finds the ground, test light is going to light up. So actually, on our meter, we we'll just do the check right here. We have a good ground, 100 millivolts, good sensor ground. So I'm going to take out that crankshaft position sensor. You try to reinstall the original one, see what happens. Um, go from there. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, so got the old sensor out. Only took a minute. What do we see? We see the flying wings. That's your money flying away because Dorman does not build anything good that's electrical. They build door handles, diff covers, fuel lines maybe, but not electronic components. So, I'm gonna try to reinstall the original crank sensor. Now, this may be bad, but at least we have a fighting chance here compared to this junk. If this doesn't work, you know, I wanna see some signal on here, but if it doesn't work, we'll have to get an OEM replacement. All right, original OEM sensor is in. Place your bets now. Is this Jeep going to fire up instantly? And what is the waveform going to look like? Scope is still rolling. Let's crank it over, see if it fires up instantly. What do you think, Walter? What? I think it's going right to fire right up. Okay. Ugh. All right. <laughs> what do you think? Here's the uh, here's the waveform. Definitely have a signal now. So we'll save those two pages. And here's a known good cam and crank. So low high low high sync notches. It's different from the 2002. We'll share this on the Google Drive so you guys can follow along. Uh oh, Pico Scope took a crap. But now, if the customer wants, we can keep going. We'll reset the codes, take it for a test drive, see if those oxygen sensor heater codes come back. Uh, there might be another problem, but that was the main issue here. All right, so now the Jeep is running. It's running smoothly. Check engine lights blinking. What is up with that? Let's shut it off. Clear the codes out. Okay. Codes. No codes present. Key off. Okay, I gotta restart restart Mr. Snap on here. Check engine light is on solid now. Alright, let's fire it up. Engine codes. This is not good. <laughs> the same codes came back instantly. Including CKP sensor circuit, no crank sensor learned, and four O2 heater circuit codes. Is the engine computer crapping out? This is pretty crazy. I mean, these Jeeps are pretty well reliable. The only thing they can really 
cause bizarre issues is uh, you know an engine computer that's 15 years old and about to take a crap Chrysler check engine lights flashing seems to run fine Look at some live data. Yeah, I actually don't know what to make of this. We have our oxygen sensor, bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two voltage, bank two sensor one, bank two sensor two voltage. Let's see if these are oscillating. They oscillate around three volts. But the heater DC percent is at zero percent. Does that make any sense at all? Zero, 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 zero. You should just disconnect the battery, reset this thing. Memory resets. Let's try this. Battery disconnect. Are you sure? Yes. Memory's now reset. Continue. Check engine lights flashing. Solid instant check engine light. This is messed up. I think this engine computer is toast. You check powers and grounds, but crazy stuff. So Suspecting this engine computer is just going nuts. The codes that it's sending doesn't make any sense. Crank sensor, O2 heaters, all four of them. So, but before calling any module, we want to be 150% sure. Check powers and grounds. So we have a fused battery power on pin 29 at the battery. So if I connect my test light to ground. That's light lights up. Pin 29 is going to be this one in the corner. Indeed, we have a good power there. And then, fused ignition switch power, pins 11 and 12. So it's just pin 11 on this one. Okay, and we got to check our ground. There's just one main ground pin. It says pin 9 and 18. So pin 9 is going to be over here, that's good, and pin 18, that's good. So everything checks out, take a picture of the original uh, serial number tag, we'll try to get one, maybe try flagship one, we want it pre-programmed so it's just plug and play, and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll be back with that, thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you next time, bye bye. All right, a little bonus footage. I just wanted to take Jeep for a spin, see if we can recreate the bucking, you know, poor running problem. Got in it, check engine lights on solid, but it's not flashing. I'm like, well, scan it for codes one more time. Now we're down to four codes. The four O2 sensor heater circuit low codes. 
no more crank sensor code and no more misfire code. So we'll drive it, see if those come back up. We're still, you know, suspecting a failing engine computer, but I definitely want to recreate the problem before, uh, you know, shooting the parts sniper rifle. All right, so we took the Jeep up the mountain here, 60 miles an hour, it runs absolutely perfectly. Misfire counters, all zeros, no flashing check engine light. So what do you make of that? Like, is it too early to call this engine computer? I think it's a little early. I mean, if the owner doesn't really care about those oxygen sensor heater codes, then I don't think it's, we have to replace it just yet. Let's go back, just wanna read the codes one more time. Okay, so we have, have these four. Let me shut the engine off. Turn it back, key back on. Clear them out, yes. I want to see if this is an instant hard fault or... Okay, so now it's flashing. Processing, please wait. Clear fault code completed, okay. No DTCs. Back off. Give it a few seconds. So check engine lights on solid. I'm sure we'll have those four again. Now you said one of those codes was there before all this stuff happened? Yeah, the upstream one too. Okay, so the, the heater for it, the heater code? Yeah. Okay. So now we have all four, so yeah, that circuit might be on its way out, but I would say it's, it's too early to replace the engine computer if you just wanted to run fine. And that's it, just these four codes. So I guess that's good news. Negative parts required at this point. If anything changes, we'll do a follow-up, but for now, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, keep your old vehicles on the road. They won't let you down.